Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're TIG welding some thin aluminum. Like, not like tissue paper thin, but thin enough to pay attention to some things. 040, 40 thousandths, one millimeter thick aluminum, and therefore we got to talk about tungsten size, filler metal size, AC frequency, and some things like that. So I'm going to weld two outside corner joints using two different machines that are laid out different on the face panel. That lets us compare how machines are, are, are laid out. So I've got two different machines I'm using today, and one of them I'll set at 250 hertz. It maxes out there, and the other one maxes out around 400 hertz. So we'll go to 400 hertz on one versus 250. Is there any difference? In between those two joints, I got a little intermission for you because a, a slider job came in. It's TIG welding steel, and I'm just building up a slot kind of down in there deep. So I've got to run my tungsten out there pretty far, and so I'm using a number eight gas lens to do that. So I'll include that today for the intermission, and I just burnt my hand on that part actually <laughs> just a minute ago, and it's smart right now. <laughs> Woo! All right, before we get into the higher frequencies like 400 and 250, uh, this is 120 hertz right here. This is kind of my usual go-to setting for frequency because it's just very versatile. It welds, it focuses the arc more than a regular standard 60 hertz like transformer machines do, but it doesn't have an annoying high pitch noise and it works good. Again, this is 040 thickness, 40 thousandths, one millimeter roughly, 6061, and outside corner joint, so I'm going to get a tack on this thing. And at 400 hertz, it really allows you to puddle a really, really small area, it seems like anyway, but then I have this 1 16th. Uh, 1.6 millimeter filler rod and that just makes for a bigger tack than I really needed So if you don't have too big a filler rod doesn't matter what frequency you're using you, you can you're not going to take advantage of it If you don't have the right size filler wire Again, we're maxed out here at 400 Hertz AC balance sets to 60 and here's why when I tried to set it to 70 which is what the machine actually calls its uh, its expert or sweet spot mode or whatever they call it uh, It just crapped up that wasn't enough cleaning action. That could have also been some slight contamination of the argon, but it needed 60% balance to run a clean puddle, and I'd rather have a clean puddle than anything. I set the start amperage to 332nd electrode, even though I'm using a 1 16th because it stuttered a little bit when I, when I set it the other way. And I'm using triangle mode on the wave shape, or waveform, whichever one you call that. A 1 16th electrode slightly tapered and just letting it ball kind of how it's going to ball. And I, like I say, I've got this thing tacked on a angle block. You can see the little ports there. If I want to put argon on the back of something there, I can do that. Uh, typically, you don't need it with aluminum, but it definitely helps to have backing. A piece of stainless steel angle iron, even a piece of steel angle iron that's been cleaned up, or a big heavy piece of uh, aluminum. However, sometimes that actually provides a little too much chill. But here's the bead at 400 hertz, 60% AC balance. That's actually 60% EN. A lot of machines are, are uh, labeled you know, backwards from that, where 60% would be 60% cleaning or 60% EP. One thing about welding thin metal is you can't step out too awfully far before you add filler wire or you'll get a hole. we we'll just blow a hole. So I'm adding at, at fairly frequent intervals here. And that's that weld. All right, now time for the intermission piece like I was talking about earlier. This is just a piece of steel that's got quite a lot of hours of machining time on it. And uh, it's made per the drawing, but the part wouldn't work when it was done. So they have to revise the drawing and go back and revise the part. So they need to shorten those slots. So what I'm going to do is fill it up with weld metal. And I have this thing laid on a block of about one inch thick aluminum. And it's trapping the argon gas so that I get some amount of shielding to the back side of this because I'm going to have to get back up in there and weld and I don't want it to be all gray and scaled and oxidized on the inside so putting that thing on a block of aluminum like that allows the argon to be trapped back there and I'll show you the back side when I finish welding this side but I thought it would be a better plan of action just to weld this first because it's harder to get to and it's going to scale up after the fact but it won't matter it's all going to be all machined off only thing I'm really concerned about is the being able to get back in there and it weld clean when I'm filling the rest of it in. 
and I've got the electrode extended out quite a ways over a half inch probably close to three quarters of an inch to get in there and you can you can see it looks fairly clean in there I'll give you another peek at it in just a second here when I get it in the vise fairly clean up in there almost as good as if I had argon gas flowing there so now I'm gonna go in and and fill that whole thing up I'm using in this particular shot I'm using only about a hundred amps and it's taking it a little while to heat up the reason I'm only using 100 amps is because I went down to a 1 16th electrode for this. I welded one or two of them with a 3 32nd electrode, and that did better actually at about 115 amps. But waiting around just for a few seconds, it, it heats up and, and does okay. Keeps me out of trouble anyway from getting too hot. So I've been camping out on this thing for several seconds now, and I can see it kind of getting a little squirrely, so I'm going to back off and let it cool for the entire cycle of the post flow, which is about 15 seconds and then we'll get back in there again I'll do that every time uh, every time pretty much you see a, a frame change here that means I stopped and allowed this thing to cool for several seconds and allowed the argon to keep it shielded so that the metal continues to flow pretty well sometimes you just have to take your time I actually probably should have taken more more time than I did but you can see along the edges of the weld slightly oxidized and and uh, you know I'm gonna have to be careful on touching that up so that it will all machine off nicely at the end Then I'll do one little quick kind of like a little build up around the perimeter there so that it so that it when it when they put it on the mill there's plenty of metal plenty of height for it to cut down to be flush and they can mill all that out of there and shorten that slot let's get back to the aluminum outside corner joints now and we're swapping machines here and I'm going to use triangle waveform once again. No pulse or anything like that. And then we'll walk through the settings here. 30% on the cleaning. So that's 30% EP, 250 hertz on the frequency. Zero downslope because I'm using a pedal. Five end amps, only 6.7 on the uh, post flow. A little bit of pre flow, no upslope and this this machine took about 80 a little over 80 amps to do the same work same triangle wave and all that stuff but who knows why it, that's just what it took stuttered just a little bit on the start there if I increased the start amperage I might have been able to get rid of that had the same issue with the dynasty when I set the start amperage a, a little bit too low Right, this is going this is going pretty well I can't swear that the uh, 400 Hertz was much better maybe a little bit better a little bit tighter see the the dynasty welds on the top and let's let's just before we before I let you go here let's take a, a little run at running one of these with 60 Hertz with this this machine here that doesn't have any of those settings just an on off switch change the polarity to AC select the selector to TIG and then amperage and that's that's the only settings on this machine and again I am using uh, 1 16th electrode sharpened to a point this time just for kicks I'll take some of these scrap pieces where I was having some real issues with with the cleaning setting and argon leaks and all kinds of things like that and I'll try to put some tacks on this 40 thousandths metal without filler and was actually very surprised at how easy it was to do that even at 60 Hertz so I think really a whole lot of the difference in frequencies gets overcome by human beings I mean you, you just kind of compensate for whatever you got in front of you whether it's 60 Hertz 120 Hertz or 500 Hertz you, you wind up making changes that you don't even realize and uh, you know all of these are welding just fine it is kind of fanning out a little bit more definitely a lot more cleaning action because the this Lincoln machine has got a, what's called an auto balance so it kind of adjusts your AC balance on the fly I think make actually mainly according to amperage but you see there's a, a much wider path of cleaning of that uh, frosty looking area outside the bead but I don't mind that that just makes a nice clean bead gives me a little bit of a little bit of uh, forgiveness All right. Well, that's all I got for this week. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.